There's an icicle hanging off the bottom of our bike rack. Hey, this is Cindy Lynn with Bridgeview Adventures. We're here at our storage facility where we have our motorhome stored. Um, it will be here for the winter and it is turning freezing cold, literally freezing. Here's freezing Tony. cold. <laughs> we rushed here after work to go ahead and get it winterized because they're calling for snow. And I did hear the temperature is supposed to be 10. So we're like, we don't want snow any snow Tuesday. <laughs> busted pipes or frozen lines yeah. so we are trying as you can see it's getting dark here yeah. when we got this when we got this camper the the water pump that pumps from the tanks mm -hmm. uh, actually had a crack in the housing and that's caused by frozen uh, they're made of plastic so whenever they uh, they freeze up it uh, it'll crack the housing on those on those plastic pumps I know the person who owned this before he when he went arrived he just blew the lines out with an air compressor that works fine, but water settles to the lowest, the lowest point, and one of the lowest points in this RV Sorry. is the uh, I'm is, cold. is the pump. <laughs> so you gotta do a look. Whoops! Hang on, we gotta pause for a second on a military base. <laughs> I don't know what that one is. Five thirty. Must be five thirty. Must be five thirty. Five thirty call. Uh, you go call. Okay. Uh, so you, you have to go one more step and put an antifreeze in it and get that antifreeze through these water lines so that they don't freeze. Uh, my father-in-law also, he broke, a, uh, his toilet broke one year because it froze. He blows his lines out, but you also got to run some antifreeze through it to get it through those traps and the water feed hose that feeds the water to your toilet. So you've got your toilet, you got your shower, you got your sink. I got an outside shower. You have to make sure that you've got that antifreeze gone out to all of those. A little bit of antifreeze in the tanks, not so much because they're open open tanks, but there are small lines and small small you know spots on those that they they can freeze, expand, and crack on you. So uh, so I already got the I put some antifreeze in my fresh tank, and I'm going to pump it through. But first things first is I'm going to drain the hot water heater so you get the water out of it. I'll leave that cap off so that the, it'll just drain all all winter long. And then I'll isolate it so that the water doesn't go to that uh, hot water heater uh, at all. So it'll be out of the loop. So I'm going to go drain that now. Hang on. I need to ask you a question. Ask me a question. Can we go to Florida? Move, wait a minute. Move to Florida? <laughs> Not move to Florida. You can go to Florida. That's I'm next already month. going That's to Florida. I, I'm ready to move there. It's too cold here, people. It's too hot there. I'm going to miss camping so much. We got to put our baby to sleep for the winter. I guess we'll pull her out in March. All right. All right, so hang on. Tony's gonna give you the rest here. You just started? Yeah. So that is the right. fresh water fill up, huh? Yes. Okay. So we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna winterize. And it's Oops. freezing out here in Indiana, by the way. All you <laughs> Florida people. <laughs> I'm so jealous right now, and you Southern. We'll see you in a month when we go to Disney. Oh, uh, maybe. <laughs> Unfortunately, for not one in, week. At least not in our baby. Yeah, not in All this. Right. Okay. So, because we have it in storage, and I'm not at the house, or I'm not at the farm where I've got all my tools. Generally speaking, when you get your winterizer, uh, they make RV and marine winterizer uh, that you fill the lines with all your water lines with. It's perfectly safe to drink, so it's not like it's it's a it's a bad chemical. It's not like car antifreeze. Generally speaking, we're not gonna drink it. Usually, what you'll end up doing is is on the other side of this of my RV. There's a cap. I can unscrew that cap, and I can screw a hose onto it. Stick the hose down into this bottle. Shut a valve off. That makes it so that the water doesn't pull from my tank. the The water feed would come from the bucket. Then when you turn on your your faucets, it sucks it out of the jug into the lines. I don't have that hose with me here. This is a temporary storage for us and everything. So what I'm doing is, is I made sure the tank was empty, our fresh water tank. Just like if you're boondocking, this is my boondocking tank. And I'm pouring, I poured three gallon jugs into my fresh water tank. 
So basically what I'm going to do from there is, is that we're going to then turn on the water and it will pump the fluid out of the tank and it'll send the, the antifreeze through the lines. One thing I do need to do before you get started though, is I need to drain the water heater. I get my tool fire, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to show where we're at. We are in a tunnel of RVs here. I mean, this is, oh my gosh, how many RVs do you think this place holds? It's got to be two or three hundred. I mean, there's like six rows of nothing but RVs and, and these are, these are the big boys. There's some smaller ones here too, but the ones that are around us are, are the pretty big ones. So they go all the way around there and then there's two or three other rows and they're all at least a football field long probably. And it is freezing out here. Okay. Okay. So on the hot water system, this is our hot water heater uh, from the outside. This right here is my drain cap. So I can unscrew this. I've already loosened it a little bit. I've got it just about finger tight. It looks hard to get to. It is. You have big fingers, you're gonna really be in trouble. Oh, it looks no. like water's coming out. Now you're gonna have to wash your feet. <laughs> uh oh. Gotta get my feet out. Oh, it's spewing. Oh, no. Oh, it's spewing. Did you watch your feet? I seen it starting to squirt and I backed up, so I think I'm good. That has pressure behind it. Wow, that was uh, a right, so it's a fun. Six, it's a six Ours is a six gallon water heater, so it's got six gallons of water that it's gonna drain out. Ooh, our hot water. Or our hot heater just kicked on. Our heater kicked on. <laughs> oh wow, that's really hot coming up. I'm just gonna sit here and put my hands up against this. Oh man, that's warm. Hand heater. <laughs> all right. Gosh, it's still. We had all that water in the hot water heater. It'll be six gallons. Six gallons. Oh, uh, I didn't know it was full though. Oh yeah, it's always full. So. Good thing we came because that would probably be frozen come tonight, right? Mm -hmm. Now there's going to be a slick spot here on the ground. <laughs> a frozen spot on the ground. <laughs> a frozen slick spot. People, I'm telling you, this cold and wind is just cutting right through me. Tony said it's 41 degrees according to your phone, right? But it feels like mid-30s to me. The sun, sun went down. It's getting cold. The, the sun went down. It is pretty darn chilly out here. It's, My teeth are ready to chatter. Like the odor you get, you can't tolerate the cold anymore. <laughs> Need some heat. She's still, she's still draining good. All right, so the hot water heater outside is done draining. So what I'm going to do is we're going to isolate the hot water heater now. And we're going to take it out of the loop. So these valves are open. This valve's open. I'm going to shut this valve. I'm going to shut this valve, and then open open this one. Uh, that should isolate. These two lines go down. The, the cold. This is the cold water going down to my tank. This is the hot water coming back up from the tank. So as of right now. The hot water heater should be out of the loop for the water. So now we can start pumping the antifreeze through the system without filling up the hot water heater because we don't want to put six gallons of antifreeze in there just for cost wise. All right, I just verified that the, the water heater is isolated. And so what we're going to do now is, is we're going to go around to each of the faucets, anything has water, and we're going to open them up until the pink antifreeze starts flowing through. So I'm going to start here at the sink. As you can tell, it's coming out white clear right now. That's getting all the excess water out of the lines. And here in a second, there it starts bubbling. And now you'll probably start seeing pink come out. Wow. That's air and antifreeze foam. <laughs> yeah, it's real foamy now. All right, she's starting to. She's starting to foam up. She's starting to try get all the air out of the lines. Come on. It's not an issue that you fill the lines with the antifreeze. It's that you just want to make sure that there's antifreeze in every line. I don't 
it's starting to get a little better. Yeah. Well, the good sign is that it's air. It's not filled with the clear water. Oh, there we go. I'm doing the, that was the hot water. I'm doing the cold water now. Oh yeah, that's a good, like pink. a good pink. Let's try this one. Faucet. Yeah, that's good I pink now. I think you just needed more. You're right. Pink on that one. We're good to go there. I'm gonna leave this in the shower, pointed that laying down. So if water does come in, this it's gonna go down and go out the and go out the, the nozzle. Hmm. Yeah. At least if not least. Oh it. wow! So I'm gonna let a little pink run down into the tank. Pinkness. Nice. That should be good. Uh, the tank was full or empty. The black tank's empty anyway, so that that should be enough. And those, those tanks tend not to not to not to uh, it'll it'll expand. The only item I need to do now is I need to make sure we have on our on our black and gray tanks. Uh, we don't have a gravity feed four inch pipe septic hose. We have the one inch pipe. There's actually a pump outside that pumps it to the other side of the of the RV. I need to make sure that we've got uh, the uh, antifreeze in that pump. Thankfully, we have a clear piece of hose on an elbow, so I'll uh, I'll uh, uh, run the gray, which is what all of these sinks are running to. A lot, a little bit of this run into the gray tank, and then I'll go outside and I'll dump the gray tank so that that uh, pink comes out the uh, gray tank hose. And then we'd be done. Oh so, yeah, that's a lot so of. Really, you hold this right here. So hold that right there, because that is clear water. Yeah, that's a lot of clear the, water going into the tank. And yell at me when you see any pink. pink. Look for pink, folks. Pink is the color of the evening. Why can't it be blue? I hear the pump running. Does anyone see any pink yet? I don't. Getting a little foamier. Maybe that's a good sign. Come on, pink. We need pink. Looks like maybe a slight tinge. Can't tell. Looks slightly pink, but maybe not. And it's cold out here. Wow, this is the next day. Look, this is all ice. So it did freeze up last night. We got her winterized just in the nick of time. Oh my gosh. We're back here the next morning. Uh, we were here till late last night. We ran out of RV uh, antifreeze. It, what, it didn't get enough into the one pipe, so I wanted to make sure we got some more. So we come back here the next morning, and last night, Look at it that. looks like foam, but it's actually Whew. snow or sleet. Yeah, us. it looks saw, just we, like we, foam pellets. We saw it on the roofs on coming in, and we thought, man, that's a heavy frost, and it's it's loose. It's not set. It's all loose. So it did something last night out here. Hey, Cindy Lynn and Tony back here at the Bridgeview Adventures. We were here last night doing some winterization um, to our camper, and we actually ran out of the antifreeze RV solution. So Tony went back to Walmart and got this 2.5 gallon one to finish up here today. And good thing we got it in last night because I got pictures. There was some kind of sleet or yeah, I don't know what it was. Of some sort it was I haven't seen it before. No, Pieces of no. foam and it then like foam, but it's cold. It's ice. It saw froze it the, over. Yeah, we saw yeah. it on all the roofs coming in mm -hmm. on some of the buildings, and I was like, man, that's a heavy frost. You know, that's kind of wild. <laughs> you know, where the sun hadn't melted it yet on the backside, 
And sure enough, we got here and it was on the bike rack. And I'm like, look at this. Yeah. yeah. So what are you finishing up with the yeah, drains uh, today? All the water lines and the water pump are good. Uh, they have antifreeze in them. But whenever I was uh, looking at the gray tank, I was using the maceration pump to pump it over to, to, the, uh, uh, to the other side. So when I was dumping out the gray side, I didn't see enough pink. And I want to make sure there's enough antifreeze in that line mm -hmm. to keep that emaceration pump from freezing up during the winter. So, okay. I mean, it's two more dollars, you know. I think all together I spent $15 on, on the RV antifreeze. So, Pretty 15 good. bucks to keep you anything. One pump is going to cost you a lot more than 15 bucks. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, $15. And this stuff is, it won't hurt you. You can drink it. It's not. You know, so at the beginning of the year, we just run water through the lines and you're done. I mean, there's nothing special you have to do to it. Easy technical, peasy, lemon technical, squeezy. <laughs> yeah, you could, you could put bleach in your tanks again and do it again. But, you know, this stuff's made for, you know, it just won't kill you. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just rinse it out good when yep. the, when spring comes around, when we get ready to head out again. Yep. And then the last thing we're going to do oh. is the fresh cab. Uh, when we get ready to lock up, the last thing we'll do is spread these out. The mice repellents, yep. all natural. You can get these at any uh, tractor supply store. Down the drain it goes. Yeah. That's more than enough of the trap, but actually... Pink, pink, pink. I'm also <laughs> just emptying it all into the gray tank. So between this trap, the trap in the sink in the bathroom, and the trap in the shower. so It's a pink out, you all. Got it. So we pour we pour the antifreeze down the drains to make sure that all the traps have antifreeze in them. That also drains them down into the gray tank. I went over to the other side. I opened up the gray valve, and now the clear thing is showing pink. So we have pink water in the lines now. So I'm going to turn on the macerated pump, just enough to pump some over to the other side, just so that we know that there's. There's there's antifreeze in the lines and especially the antifreeze is in the pump itself. So other than that, I'm gonna pump that out a little bit and then she'll be done. So I'm gonna turn on the yellow just Whoops. until we see the pink come out. Here it comes. That's just this is just gray water. Just water. <laughs> Need a drain in the concrete though. There's the pink. It's not real pink, but it's well, light pink. We'll also tell you how cold it was last night. That slush. Oh man, I knew it was gonna get cold last night, but whew. That was actually, Did that come out of the pipe? Probably the came slush? out of, came out of the slush. That's what I was figured. Yep. But we did have enough. It was cold enough that it. Run it just a little more. Wow. Tony's putting tire covers on. They look a little stiff in the cold. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They're really cold. Stiff. <sighs> in the summer, they're real pliable and just like normal fabric. Oh, get it. <laughs> He's cool. <crawling. laughs> I only see your legs hanging out now. Looks like Beastie's eating you. When you wrap these around the tire, when you put this over the tire, and this one side has a a ball on it, and the other side has a hoop, and you wrap it around the tire and loop it. Oh. In the back, I've got dually tires, so you have to go between the tires to to, to reach this. Mm. So I use my fire poker, which has a hook on it, <laughs> to reach over, grab the hoop, pull the hoop over to me. How so ingenious is that? Good idea, Tony. <laughs> Nice. Uh, Hi, Tony. Hello. I know. I'm helping. I'm helping. Can't you tell? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, what do you need me to do? I'm going, you're going to have to grab the tarp and bring it around. So okay. Get it around the front. Okay. Before I. And then basically, we're going to work it back. The bad part about getting the cover on, it doesn't just slide on because of the air conditioning, the vents, the antennas. What else is up there? Well, you got to be lined up, too, and I don't know where the 
exact, you know, square in a circle. I can see it from here. I can help you. So the, it looks like the front here needs to be pulled over. The back is close to being lined up, but the front is not. Tony's down from the top. <laughs>